Welcome to Deep Dive Defense, military and aerospace enthusiasts. Over here we give rare insights you won't hear elsewhere. Today's topic is Iran's unique Shahed-238 jet-powered one-way attack drone, named Garan-3 in Russian service. The Shahed-238 saw its initial combat use by Iran during the 12-day conflict between Iran and Israel in 2025, though it had been previously utilized by Russia against Ukraine on a limited scale. In numerous respects, this unique weapon system can be characterized as a stealth, long-range land attack cruise missile, with the crucial distinction of being significantly cheaper and consequently available in higher quantities to exert an actual impact on the battlefield. The Shahed-238 is derived from the now-famous Shahed-136, which has been emulated even by the United States. A video covering that notorious one-way attack drone is linked above. The subsequent step Iran undertook after mastering the Shahed-136 was to develop a more potent and dangerous variant that still achieved the immense range of 1,200 kilometers necessary to threaten its main regional adversary Israel. The Shahed-136 design team divided into two groups, with one faction working on the Shahed-238, while the other pursued an opposite objective, namely, to further extend the already considerable 2,500-kilometer range of the Shahed-136 to an impressive 4,000 kilometers, resulting in the Shahed-136B variant, which will be examined in a dedicated future video. Consequently, the question arises, why was the range of the Shahed-136 roughly halved to 1,200 kilometers for the Shahed-238? The answer lies fundamentally in the higher speed. The average speed increased from approximately 180 km per hour on the piston-engine propeller-driven Shahed-136 to an average cruise speed exceeding 500 km per hour. This was due to the new mini-turbojet propulsion on the Shahed-238. This resulted in a vast, roughly threefold increase in velocity. The significance of this key enhancement directly affects the time available for an interception cycle conducted by fighter aircraft. Within the time a fighter jet requires to fly towards a Shahed-136, intercept it, and proceed to the next target, two additional Shahed-238 drones would have sufficient time to penetrate the defenses. This necessitates either an increase in the number of fighter jets dedicated to patrol and interceptions, or the employment of costlier and longer-ranged air-to-air missiles, such as the AIM-120 Amram. This latter point is critically important because the Shahed-238, like its predecessor the 136, is specifically engineered for low-cost and rapid, simplified production. Here, the question emerges, why wouldn't Iran simply employ the Pava family of land-attack cruise missiles, which offer similar range and payload? A key advantage is the lower cost of the Shahed-238 drone compared to the Pave missile. A link to a dedicated video on the Pave is provided above. However, Another key feature of the Shahed-238 is its significantly reduced radar cross-section compared to the Pave. This effectively creates a stealth cruise missile without incurring the substantial production costs and aerodynamic penalties that a dedicated stealth land attack cruise missile with comparable range performance would cause. The penalty the Shahed-238 accepts for these advantages includes its slightly lower cruise speed of 500 km per hour compared to the 600 to 700 typical of the PAVE family land attack cruise missiles. Additionally, it necessitates operation at an approximate altitude of 10 kilometers to achieve its maximum range against distant adversary like Israel. Nevertheless, it is capable of executing a high-low flight profile combination when adversary threat systems necessitate it. Consequently, it would fly at the 10 kilometer cruise altitude outside the engagement envelope of most short-range anti-aircraft systems during transit through low-threat regions, subsequently descending to terrain masking low altitudes where higher-threat air defense systems are present. In the Israeli context, the range performance of 1,200 km is highly sufficient, as it incorporates a 200-300 to km reserve, which can be specifically allocated for low-altitude flight phases. This reserve is practical given the nearest point of Iran to Israel is approximately 900 kilometers. Here, another key feature of the Shahed-238 becomes relevant. The launcher's low detectable footprint. This applies both to its launch vehicle, which can be disguised as an ordinary civilian truck, and to its low thermal signature during the rocket-assisted launch phase of the drone. 
these low signature characteristics would permit the Shahed-238 to be operated very close to border regions, where the threat of detection by surveillance assets is highest. The truck launch takeoff method even allows for lower footprint and virtually no infrared flash, rocket-assisted launch causes. The drone also employs a high-speed dive maneuver in its final stage to defeat terminal air defenses protecting the target. Here it is reported to reach speeds of around 650 km per hour, which makes it very difficult to counter by manually operated anti-aircraft artillery. During the 12-day conflict between Iran and Israel, Iran employed a combined strategy utilizing low-end Arash-type one-way attack drones, the improved variant of the Shahed-107 Low Observable OWA drone, and a mix of Shahed-136 and Shahed-238 Delta blended wing body drones, featuring low radar cross-sections. Periodic and carefully calibrated launches of these diverse drone types compelled the Israeli and its allied air forces, primarily the US Air Force to maintain continuous combat air patrols over the airspace east to Israel. This imposed significant operational costs and fatigue on these adversary military assets. It also resulted in fewer Air Force resources being available for offensive operations against Iranian territory. Therefore, the strategy of maintaining ambiguity regarding the timing, type, and threat level presented by these one-way attack drone launches constituted an effective Iranian attrition warfare tactic. Iran deliberately avoided massive formations of Shahed-136 and Shahed-238 drones because the Israeli military's defenses were not sufficiently degraded to grant these subsonic weapon systems a high probability of penetrating Israeli airspace and striking targets successfully. This rationale also explains Iran's decision not to launch any Pave family land attack cruise missiles during the 12-day exchange. This all underscores why this specific conflict is not representative of how the Shahed-238 would be employed in an all-out high-intensity conflict scenario. Specifically, through mass launches involving hundreds of these relatively fast drones to overwhelm fighter jet interceptors attempting to intercept and neutralize them. Interestingly, the Shahed-238 utilizes the same low-cost Tolway-10 mini turbojet engine employed by the Pave land attack cruise missile and the Shahed-191 bomber drone. The high production volume across these multiple platforms using this common engine results in corresponding economies of scale thereby lowering the final unit cost of this critical propulsion subsystem. One key vulnerability of the standard Shahed-238 variant is its reliance on Global Navigation Satellite Systems GNSS, for positioning and guidance. In this context, jamming and spoofing could easily cause the drone to miss its intended target, particularly when facing an adversary as technologically advanced as Israel. To counter this vulnerability, the Shahed-238 incorporates a Controlled Reception Pattern Antenna CRPA array. This system enables directional nulling towards jamming sources, allowing reception of authentic satellite signal direction, a solution shared by numerous other Iranian systems. However, to address the critical guidance vulnerability more robustly, variants of the Shahed-238 have been observed equipped with nose-mounted seeker systems. Evidence derived from Russian-operated, license-produced Shahed-136 or Jaran-2 drones employed against Ukraine indicates these seekers can utilize digital scene matching for positional determination. This capability enables guidance without dependence on external satellite positioning data. Given the confirmed use of terrain contour matching TURCOM, in the Pave cruise missile family, it is logically consistent that advanced Shahed-238 variants employ the highly robust Digital Scene Matching Area Correlation DESMAC, guidance system. This integrates a highly jam-resistant guidance capability into this low-cost weapon platform. Complementing its reduced radar signature and robust guidance, the Shahed-238 also addresses infrared signature management. The hot engine and exhaust section are obscured from direct line-of-sight observation by the pair of vertical stabilizers positioned at its wingtips. These obstruct the engine compartment from numerous relevant angles within the forward hemisphere. When combined with the engine's placement within an internal shroud, infrared detection of the drone becomes significantly more challenging compared to conventional land attack cruise missiles like the Pave. In conclusion, the Shahed-238 constitutes a highly sophisticated and uniquely tailored weapon system, 
optimized for Iran's strategic requirements considering the distances to and technological capabilities of its adversaries. Its low production cost, derived from manufacturing methodologies pioneered for the Shahed 136, have apparently also facilitated the license-produced Russian variant, designated Garan 3. For Iran, the decisive factor is the large quantity of Shahed 238 drones available for deployment in conflict scenarios to strike high-value adversary targets. This effectively creates a stealthy, low-cost cruise missile capability representing in itself a revolutionary advancement in modern warfare. So that's all for today. If you liked it, give a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe. It really makes a difference in the YouTube algorithm and is a great support to the channel. The real enthusiast can become members and given access to exciting membership area material. Thanks for your support and motivation. See you next time.